Oversized weapons! A lot of people don't know about this, and those that do dismiss it or don't think about it, which is a shame because it's fun for players. It offers more character concepts, and it boosts melee marshals. You know, the classes that really need a boost in this game to begin with? So I'm pro oversized weapons. Giant anime swords are super fun! Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we encourage fun. Oversized weapons can be found at chapter 9, page 200. 277 in the DMG. It says, Big monsters typically wielding oversized weapons that deal extra dice of damage on a hit, double the weapon dice if the creature is large, triple the weapon dice if it's huge, and quadruple the weapon dice if it's gargantuan. For example, a giant wielding an appropriately large great axe deals 3d12 slashing damage plus its strength bonus instead of the normal 1d12. A Creature has disadvantage on attack rolls with a weapon that is sized for a larger attacker. You can rule that a weapon sized for an attacker two or more sizes larger is too big for the creature to use at all. But Kobold, it says monster. It's part of the creating a monster section. This isn't rules for players. Okay, let's find the definition of monster then. Here we go. The monster manual says, what is a monster? A monster is defined as any creature that can be interacted with and potentially fought and killed. Even something as harmless as a frog or as benevolent as a unicorn is a monster by this definition. The term also applies to humans, elves, dwarves, and other civilized folk who might be friends or rivals to the player character. Most of the monsters that haunt the D&D world, however, are threats that are meant to be stopped. Rampaging demons, conniving devils, soul-sucking undead, summon elementals, the list goes on. So, a monster is defined as any creature, Gator. The definition for a creature in 5e doesn't exist, but we know a player character is a creature. A player character is also a monster. There's no wiggle room if it says a monster is defined as any creature that could be interacted with and potentially fought and killed. You can interact with a player. You can fight a player and kill the player. A monster is defined as any creature, including players. Plus, to add to this, it says right here, a creature has disadvantage on attack rolls with a weapon that is sized for a larger attacker. They used the word creature there. Creatures, like players, can absolutely use oversized weapons. I think you get the point. Continuing on, when Rune Knight didn't exist, the only way for players to properly use oversized weapons is by using Enlarge Reduce. Let's read the spell. Spell. Enlarge Reduce, second level, action, 30 foot range, 1 minute. You can cause a creature or an object you can see within range to grow larger or smaller for the duration. Choose either a creature or an object that is neither worn nor carried. If the target is unwilling, it can make a constitution saving throw. On a success, the spell has no effect. If the target is a creature, everything it is wearing and carrying changes size with it. Any item dropped by an affected creature returns to normal size at once. Enlarged, the target size doubles in all dimensions, and its weight is multiplied by 8. This growth increases its size by one category, from medium to large, for example. If there isn't enough room for the target to double its size, a creature or object object attains the maximum possible size in the space available. Until the spell ends, the target also has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. The target's weapon also grows to match its new size. While these weapons are enlarged, the target's attack with them deal 1d4 extra damage. Everything it's wearing and carrying changes size. This creates an oversized weapon if you are a medium-sized creature becoming large. It even says later on these weapons are enlarged. Following that, you would follow the usual dice rules for oversized weapons and the additional 1d4 extra damage. 
That was the only way rules as written to use oversized weapons for a long time. And a lot of people had no idea because oversized weapon rules is written in the wrong section. It should be written in the weapon rules. If it was, no one would have batted an eye. It would have been widely accepted, but here we are. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. This video is sponsored by Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt. That's right, this book made some sweet love to Lovecraft and Bloodborne. It provides over 12 twisted race options and more than 15 different subclasses ready to face the madness that thrives in this grim dark world. Fight against insane foes, outrageous abominations and fallen friends. Empower yourself as a hunter with blasphemous magic. Steal the powers of the eldritch beings and unleash your bestial instincts to obliterate your foes. But be Beware, you might lose your sanity in the hunt. Madness is omnipresent and with over a hundred effects, it will shatter your mind if you're not careful. Or you can embrace the madness to see how your character changes or dies. Those are fun experiences. It will change the way you roleplay too. Eight unique mechanics involving the phases of these eldritch moons. They will change the environment dramatically into a different kind of hell that you must survive. They say the voice Void Moon's blood malice can turn even a hippie into a murder hobo. Sounds like a productive night to me. Less talk, more kill. Arm yourself with more than 20 unique weapons and firearms that are fully illustrated for your immersion. Stand against the colossal horrors of the void, battle tentacles, teeth, and pulsing otherworldly eyes. There's over 50 horrifying monsters, including spawns of the old ones. This book promises four fun adventures that will break you. You'll Laugh in madness forever. It's an unforgettable experience you'll remember throughout the tides of eons. You'll be a changed man. <laughs> Join the hunt today. Check out their Kickstarter. I'm a sucker for Lovecraft stuff, by the way. I want this. Back to the video, eventually Tashis came out with a new way to get oversized weapons. The Rune Knight subclass, Giant's Might says, As a bonus action, you can magically gain one of the following benefits, which lasts for one minute. If you are smaller than large, you become large, along with anything you are wearing. If you lack the room to become large, your size doesn't change. You have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Once on on each of your turns, one of your attacks with a weapon or unarmed strike can deal an extra 1d6 damage to a target on a hit. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses of it when you finish a long rest. This works almost exactly the same as in large reduced. The difference here is that this can't make you bigger than large, and you can only deal the extra damage once per turn. You can combo this with enlarge reduce to become huge that's quite a lot of damage super fun that's triple the weapon dice plus the extra 1d6 from giant's might and 1d4 from enlarge reduce you just gotta remember the once per turn with the 1d6 as you progress in this fighter subclass to level 18, you'll get Runic Juggernaut. Your Giant's Might feature increases to 1d10, and your size can increase to huge. Once someone casts Enlarge from there, you'll be gargantuan size. That's quadruple the weapon dice, plus 1d10 from Runic Juggernaut, and 1d4 from Enlarge. I think that's well deserved. I believe you have the right to be very powerful at these levels. This is fun. Then lastly, we have the Path of the Giant Barbarian subclass that also lets you become large, but that's not properly out yet. I'm going to cover this a different time. If you want to check out my UA coverage, you can. End of video. There's a mathematical question from here if this is overpowered or not. Looking at action economy, spell cost with concentration, and feature proficiency number of times usage, it's fun. Fine, just throw multiple encounters a day and remember, this is a resource game. They will run out of resources eventually. The builds to optimize in large reduce with Runite are 
are fine. These one minute durations are over after one encounter. Casting in large on self is normally not a good move. There will always be a risk to lose that concentration on self, especially if you're in melee. Sure, you have proficiency in con, so that helps your case, and it's not something stupid like haste. Casting in large takes an action, so it's a round setup. That in itself might not be worth the cost. Anyways, swinging these huge weapons at creatures still only targets one creature at a time, so I wouldn't be worried. By the way, enlarge might be a good idea if you're using an oversized hand crossbow. Yes, you can do that. You can make anything into an oversized weapon, really, so have fun. Anyways, versus full casters, in terms of power, the argument always comes down to what is better. Mass shutdown that can take half the encounter out of the fight, or tons and tons of damage to a single creature to kill them early. Majority of the times, mass shutdown wins. It's the king of the game. Never forget that. If you still want to know the math in case this is overpowered, check out this article by Tabletop Builds. They deserve views. They put a lot of work into this article, and they did the math. Credit is due. That's it. Me and Steinhardt hopes to earn your support. They enjoy a good hunt like I do. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.